All right, let's get this thing cracking, YouTube. What's good, world? It's your boy, Mastermind Man, and this is another weekday drop. This is the November 2021 weekday drop, and uh, we're going to be talking about a couple things here in gaming and technology, man. But before I get started, man, for those that's new, be sure to follow me everywhere on all platforms, TikTok, IG, Master23Mind, YouTube, Mastermind RGTV, that's where we are now on YouTube also, and on all podcast platforms, Real Gamer, for the YouTube people, y'all see it behind me, and for the Anchor people, Real Gamer, Mastermind RGTV on YouTube, that's where we at. Look, man, let's jump right into this, man. We got a lot to talk about. Be sure to check out the previous episode of the podcast, also um, the October 2021 weekday drops, but um, picking up right what I was talking about from October episodes, pretty much a uh, couple stuff. I already write me a little list down here to kind of keep y'all in check with a couple things. So we talk. We're going to we're going to be speaking about um, Netflix gaming, just a little bit, just a tad bit on that. Overwatch 2 and uh, Diablo 4 is now delayed. We're going to speak just a little bit about that. Uh, the Sega and the whole Microsoft thing that happened uh, currently this week or uh, end of October, should I say. We're going to speak a little bit about that. And uh, Jay-Z getting into the metaverse. Jumping right into the metaverse. Oh, and before that, Resident Evil uh, Village uh, getting a free deal. So you're going to speak about Resident Evil also. But uh, I want to jump right into the metaverse thing because it's really a big thing to talk about. And I'm going to actually do another podcast episode to where it's like dedicated to what we're going to speak about. Cryptocurrency, metaverse, and how all of this stuff is really just kind of coming threefold with gaming. Um, again, I'm going to do another episode just diving deep into that. But just a quick glimpse of what the metaverse is the metaverse is basically a digital world now to us gamers we already kind of been in the back and forth in the metaverse just a little bit uh for us like vr and ar and things like that and even mixed reality um those things give you such a of a preview of a glimpse inside of this digital world now the metaverse is a little bit more the future metaverse, I would say, was what Facebook showed uh, is something that they hope to accomplish to be just running just like that. Now, we haven't really technically got to that point per se, but we're kind of there, but not all the way there. Now, the thing is, I'm not really sure how they're going to shift to like real world things over into this world is is really is really twisted and it's really weird because you people still gotta live outside of the metaverse and another podcast i'm gonna dive deep into those questions because i got questions myself but just going back to a gaming perspective is it's definitely a big thing for gamers and we're looking like yo <laughs> what's up yo come on over to my metaverse crib think remember uh playstation home back in the day now for a quick moment i want you for all the gamers y'all know about the playstation home i want y'all to take that glimpse and sims take that that same excitement that you have for sims same excitement that you have for playstation home take that and bring that into the metaverse mix that in with it imagine you purchasing some new Nikes or something inside the metaverse. It's not even out in the real world yet. Nike just trademarked uh, their stuff to be purchased in the metaverse. Everything is going completely digital now. Cryptocurrency, all this stuff. Purchase these digital Nikes with uh, some cryptocurrency. And they're not even out in the real world yet. Us uh, Sims players over here love to decorate our characters, and us PlayStation Home people love to kind of, you know, show off our digital land or, uh, you know, just have a good time and meet and social react with other people in this digital world. The metaverse is that, people. It's Sims times 100. It's PlayStation Home times 100. It's any type of digital immersed 
world that we have we are used to playing here in the gaming world is times that so would that's just mind-blowing right yeah definitely uh jay-z is investing in the metaverse why is that huge because we're talking about one of the biggest hip-hop artists uh making a big investment on a digital world so you may think that you know well for one going back to the whole metaverse just for a little bit it's more of a 3d world uh, that's why they call it web three it's three-dimensional type and two-dimensional more from the apps per se we're technically already in these digital worlds because we're on our phones all the time we're in a digital world but the metaverse we're gonna like the phone is all around us type deal and we have emojis and nice little avatar characters or whatnot representing us but you know for the biggest hip-hop artist to make an investment on the meta universe remember when um i can't think of the artist's name right now that did a concert live in fortnite i can't think of his name right now uh but things like that imagine jay-z you know retiring <laughs> over here in the real rap world and then announce a new like he did the black album uh, you know, the encore, like something, a next big record like that being over here in the metal universe to where Jay-Z say, you know what, I'm going to drop some digital exclusive meta, uh, meta universe content that the real world can't hear. You're going to have to come over here in the metaverse to kind of check out my new concert or such and such and such. Could he do something like that? Of course. A digital Rockefeller, maybe. Of course. New rock, uh, new Rockefeller label or whatnot of course all these things can happen but for the mere fact that jay-z is taking a stab into the metal universe that's a great thing for hip-hop why because hip-hop and gaming run core to core hand to hand going back touching a little bit who's all investing in the metal universe you got microsoft microsoft already taken off with the halo lens but that's ar tech if you don't know what that is take a look and see what microsoft is already doing They've been working on AR tech for quite some time now and going, who else making a really big investment? We know about Facebook. Um, Snapchat is one. Um, I'm waiting to see what Apple position is in the whole VR and AR. Apple is working on something, but we don't really know quite what is what exactly it is. But microsoft is definitely a head player in it facebook definitely a head player snapchat uh i'm sure you know what i'm saying other technical companies is probably coming along those are just the top right off head and nike just you know they're they're diving right into it uh, i'm pretty sure there's more but that's just off the top of my head right now that i can just name to you but just looking at the mere fact that you got one key player over here in the tech world is microsoft the other key player over here in the hip hop world is Jay Z. I mean, then in the I, I, mixing, blending both of those together, you got Nike is a, a big time player, but you got top three players that's ready to play. And not to mention that you even got banks like JP Mortgage and other banks that's hopping into a cryptocurrency, willing to invest also into this metal universe. It's going to be pretty exciting, folks. So just keep your ears and your eyes tucked in and away and just be ready to get engaged into this digital world because it's going to happen. <laughs> but uh, moving on, man, I'm going to go a little bit backwards my list, but I'm going to talk about this Resident Evil Village getting a free DLC. So the thing is, man, why I'm pumped about that is the mere fact that I love to see games get free DLCs or some type of free content download or whatnot coming out because that keeps uh, us talking about the game, that keeps us hype about the game, that just keeps us ready to go with the game and for Village did pretty good this year and for them to drop us some extra content around the holiday season also I think it's a great little look for Resident Evil and going back to vr and also touching on resident evil remember resident evil 4 just drop vr just drop yo that's keeping these guys they they're keeping they're keeping us hyped and and wanting to play more resident evil this whole resident evil 4 vr thing i mean 
I haven't got a chance to play it yet, but from looking at it, it's like, it's so weird, man, because you know the VR, all you see for the Anchor people and Spotify people, y'all can't see my hand motions over here unless I upload this video to you guys. Shout out to Anchor and Spotify for also having a video now. But um, it's like on the VR world, you only see like your hands or whatnot. So all this is, here's my arm. All this is chopped off in the VR world. And you only see your hands. And it's kind of weird, you know? So it's like, ah. Uh, Playing Resident Evil 4 over and over and over so so much in the past and seeing it in a VR perspective, it's like, yo, imagine playing that, you know what I'm saying, in VR. Like, I'm thinking now of the Resident Evil 4 game and it's like, yo, the chainsaw dude, the, the mercenary mode they had in that game. Imagine playing that in VR. Like, that'd be kind of trippy and kind of crazy because I feel like... It wouldn't be able to keep up with my emotions. That's one of the things I had a problem with VR. Playing several different VR games is the motion in it. Now, PS4, PS4 uh, VR, they did a pretty good job at, you know what I'm saying, uh, not feeling so motion sickness a little bit, but it's still there. And I'm wondering, is uh, do Resident Evil 4 VR have that same... Like, will I get motion sickness off of it? From some of the stuff I've seen, it kind of, when you're looking at it on video, it don't really do it good justice. VR is one of those things where you have to experience for yourself, hands-on. You can't really just kind of look at someone else playing it because it feel like, yo, like, is, is he actually moving that slow? He's not really. It's just slow leg and... Why is it so wavy when he, it's not really wavy when you're actually in the headset, but it may look that way. So you have to actually get your personal hands on it to kind of really give you um, a full perspective view of VR, how it really is. So for the mere fact we got Resident Evil 4 in VR, I really wish they would do a complete remaster. I wouldn't even say remaster. I say remake. A complete remake of Resident Evil 4. I'm hoping for that still for better graphics. But the fact that we got a VR experience on Resident Evil 4, I can appreciate. And again, Resident Evil dropping this free DLC for Resident Evil Village. I'm all for that, man. That's what's up. Moving on, man. Let's talk about Microsoft and Sega. So, I think at the beginning of this video, I might have said Sony. I'm so, so sorry. Um, Sega. Sega and Microsoft got this whole little deal. Now... I don't know how long y'all really been rocking with me here, man, but I appreciate you if you have. But we've been doing the podcast quite some time, and it's a lot of stuff that I predicted. Now, we did speak on an episode, I think, in about 2018. Um, it's King Pimps and Players uh, 2022, something like that. And a shout out to my homie, my OG homie, Fred Freeze. We made a couple predictions about Microsoft and Apple and Sony and Sega and different stuff. We just kind of just making different predictions. What if uh, could they do this or whatnot? So this whole Sega thing. Now, when I first seen it, I was like, yo, I know Sega ain't finna come out with another console or they finna team team with Microsoft. Microsoft ain't buying them and like that. So it's not that. It's, it's actually not that. Let me see. I actually wanted to uh, read like the headline on it. Because at first I didn't quite understand it. But it's one of those things like, oh, okay. Okay, so here's the main thing. Uh, uh, Sega and, and Microsoft are, are basically exploring a strategy alliance to build a next generation gaming development uh, environment. What I, I, that's still like, you're working together on something, but not a game or a console. So what are you working on? Meta Universe. Perhaps. Hmm. They did, keywords people, next generation gaming development environment. So the thing is, I'm thinking, okay, maybe this can be a point to where Sega can kind of dive deeper into the meta universe also later on in in the future but they're probably just working i didn't read the full article they got a full article on that so don't don't judge me or take my words with with you know whatever but what i'm thinking is 
if Sega can get with Microsoft on some things, it would be somewhere to where they can keep the Sega legacy going. And the way to do that, introduce them and put Sega in the meta universe. Who's all, I just said who was a key factor player in the meta universe, Facebook, Nike, Microsoft. Off the top of my head, those top three, hands down. Because Microsoft was already doing their thing with AR. They already got a couple Sega games, you know what I'm saying, lined up, ready to go. Sony do too, of course, but to see that what you're going to start seeing is just like we begin to see when Microsoft was just buying up companies. Uh, Sony buying up several different companies or partner or what, whatever, whatever. Microsoft doing the same thing with Sega, but not buying them, but just kind of partnering with them to work on something maybe for the future. I think it's going to be Meta Universe. Now, I'm not necessarily saying I'm making a prediction or saying that we made a prediction on the previous episodes of podcast, but just having that futuristic conversation of, yo, what would it be like if a great combination someone like a Sega and a Microsoft work together on something or a Nintendo and Apple work together on something really big well they kind of did and that's what's kind of going on so to keep Sega name relevant since they're not dropping a new console they're just dropping games we know we get a new Sonic but to really push Sega I think Sega can I wouldn't say they can really help Microsoft. Microsoft can kind of kind of help them. So keeping them relevant and kind of keep their games safe. <laughs> For one thing, <laughs> Microsoft is going to definitely get first grabs on any type of free DLCs, on any type of Sega uh, game or something like a Sonic game or whatever. Microsoft should definitely get first dibs on that since they're working with Sega. Maybe on net- network interface in uh with some cloud gaming i think it was about cloud gaming now that i think about it uh because i didn't read the full article but it's probably on some stuff in the cloud because microsoft and sony actually work together on some cloud uh some cloud technology or working together on some network things probably with the cross play or whatnot but anyway the thing i'm saying is make them relevant in the meta universe that would be perfect i can see you know what i'm saying some nice sonic avatars or whatnot in the the, in in the meta universe thanks to microsoft you know special uh elite only for for microsoft members and so i'm telling you man this meta universe thing is gonna get crazy you hear me it's gonna get crazy man It's, it's the future man it's gonna get crazy and i don't really see nothing that sega can really help microsoft out it's more of a what can microsoft do for sega so cloud gaming in the future meta universe definitely going to be the thing moving on now this whole overwatch 2 and diablo 4 getting pushed back i'm okay with that and now overwatch 2 i played it it was okay i wasn't that good at it but diablo 4 looking like it's looking real good now but hey i ain't tripping take your time on it don't pressure these developers to like hey come out with the game hurry you know they send people death threats and all that man and you don't make this game on time i'm gonna get you (laughs) you don't do that man don't rush these people to make these games y'all take y'all time i understand just make it great i don't i hate to see games when they come out and they have all types of bugs they just seem like they're not ready so when they push games back cool make sure it's ready keep it hot i I take the time we get it long as it's good so hey diablo 4 man y'all taking time while y'all working on that moving on man talking about this netflix game so the games actually the games that's on netflix i haven't had a chance to check them out yet but if netflix can pull this off to where if they can make a partner with some great games right here on your television ooh, they become a whole nother type of competition 
I'm, I'm actually looking here on Netflix now to see if it's some type of category. It should be some type of category or something up for. Uh, I'm gonna have to start doing Netflix game reviews. <laughs> I don't see any type of category for it, but if Netflix are, are able to, I'm pretty sure it's like it's not like big time gaming. It's probably simple gamings games that you know you could just play with the remote or whatnot but if you can hook a, in the future in the future if you can hook a controller up to your television okay let's say you got the television and you you know you got android tv and stuff already built into your television netflix all this stuff netflix partner with a television put netflix automatically in it kind of like google stadia you use your Google Stadia controller. What if they partner with Google? Hmm, that would be perfect. They already make Android TVs. Google can just partner with Netflix to strengthening their gaming platform. Also leveraging Netflix on all televisions. But Netflix can also use that opportunity to introduce those gaming audience already in the google side of people to their netflix genre of game perfect idea that actually be really really cool so i think netflix ceo need to write that down but um if they partner with android tv netflix is inside and it comes with a controller or you can use your stadia controller because you can already use almost any controller with the stadia with the google stadia so if you can use a controller with Netflix and they get some pretty good, decent games on there, that's a completely different type of competition. So that's actually like, I don't really see it being nothing big, but just the mere fact that Netflix, the blockbuster killer, is entering in the gaming universe. It tells you gaming is number one, man. We've been number one for quite some time, but we've been like underdogs where everything else been number one. And we just been kind of sitting in the back, waiting our turn almost. Gaming been exciting and it been taking over. It just, we are the future. <laughs> we are the future. So funny how hip hop, entertainment, music, all other type of things is now coming to the gaming world. We welcome you all, but we ask that you all have a very uh, happy, enthusiastic to be here. Because a lot of gamers, we a lot of gamers, man, we're happy. We're always happy, and we're always, you know, even if we, we get toe up on times online, we get angry, cussing, and all that fussing, but we still, a hey, good game, bro, good game, you know. A lot of gamers I meet, you know, very respectful and very uh, happy and very uh, generous. So, you know, we are number one and we are the future. I say that humbly. But, uh, yes, it's very interesting. I think Netflix have an opportunity to really do something great if they pull it off. But I don't really think it's going to be nothing big. But if they can pull this off right, I would say they would have to partner with someone. If they partner with Google for the uh, Android TVs, that'd be great. But Google Stadia don't have any great games. And you have to have a great game to compete with a juggernaut like PlayStation or Microsoft or even Nintendo. So, yeah. And Netflix is not necessarily, they're not doing this for to compete with anybody. But they're just kind of doing this because they know gaming is the spot. Gaming is, 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 it is what it is. You know, they're not just getting in the space to where I, we're tired of watching Netflix. We're going to play some video games. They're trying to get into the gaming space and they're pretty much there now. I'm hoping that they pull it off right, make some small decisions, partner with a company and make this thing a lot more exciting because that just opened the doors up for more gamers. So, you know. Pretty dope. That's all I got on the board right there. Um, we just seen the call. I'm going to speak on that a little bit. We just seen the Call of Duty um, Vanguard live release. Now, I won't say live release, but more of like 
uh, live concert almost. <laughs> I was not expecting T Pain. Shout out to T Pain. I wasn't expecting Migos. Shout out to Migos. I wasn't expecting Lil Jon. Shout out to Lil Jon. I wasn't expecting none of that. None of those guys. I was not expecting them. Lil Jon suck at Call of Duty, by the way. <laughs> But again, man, you know, it's pretty dope to see. I think T-Pain brought the excitement to the show. It's pretty dope. Uh, at the end, they kind of just tricked that thing out and turned it out into a concert. One expecting that. But, um, yeah, IGN was like, yeah, uh, cut. Migos going live. Cut. They talking to talk about the game and cut. We, un we, we out. <laughs> but, yeah, man, it's pretty good to see, man. And I think they hyped up the Call of Duty Vanguard. Did a good job at hyping it up. Because it needs some hype. Because the Battlefield uh, 2042, I think that's the name of it. It we uh, it, it, it looked better for its graphics. But after seeing Vanguard tonight, it looks really, really good. But see, the thing is, a lot of people don't want to go back to the whole World War II. Uh, back in the old day wars or whatnot. So, you know, they had to kind of hype it up. Meanwhile, Battlefield uh, 2042 is like futuristic first-person shooter. That's what we want. You know what I'm saying? So I'm actually excited to see the next Call of Duty because knowing the fact that we're going back to World War II, which to me is okay, but it's still of a problem. I really wish they would have took a different approach, not the World War II, but the graphics looks way better tonight than what i seen in the beta and the beta was cool but what i seen tonight that's a call of duty ready to release and it looks pretty good the graphics was amazing um that the graphics was really really beautiful and they bring in some they bring in the heat with the whole war zone thing and the zombies look pretty cool too so i'm excited for this call i'm more excited after seeing it tonight, I'm more excited for the Call of Duty, but I'm really more excited for the next Call of Duty. And the reason I say that is because of the graphics and because this Call of Duty is really, you know what I'm saying, built on next gen. The next Call of Duty is going to be what you're going to really, really see the graphics. So the graphics look amazing on this and the campaign story, how they're chopping it up in like four different parts or whatnot. I think that's amazing. And uh can't wait to see what they do with it for us like the you know, they drop the seasonal content all year with it and how they mix in the zombies with this one. It's freaking amazing. So I'm much more excited for this one after the live event they dropped tonight. Uh by the time this podcast be out, the new Vanguard Call of Duty will be out. But looking at it, I may have to probably wait to about December to get it made to get it. I'm gonna see how it plays. See how everything goes. I'm going to be watching a couple of streamers play. But uh, I'm going to have to wait to pick that one up. Cold War is still my favorite for right now. Uh, real quick before I get out of here. Like Anchor Time is kicking me on. Anchor, y'all need to change that, man. To where we're doing a podcast on the computer. We can't go no longer than 30 minutes. That's not cool at all. I'm going to talk about real fast. Uh, the 2022 release. We got uh, Uncharted. They got, you remember got the whole, the whole Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection. For PS5 dropping, and we got um, Horizon the Forbidden West and Gran Turismo 7. So 2022 is already looking pretty good, and God of War, can't forget that. 2022 is going to be a great year, folks. I mean, Gran Turismo 7, I've been looking at all the traders, trailers for that for quite some time. It's, hey, beginning 2022 looking real good. PlayStation did a pretty good job this year and coming into year 2022, and it's like, Yo, you couldn't, you, you can't really argue that. And I was looking at a comparison to what, when PS4 uh, first dropped versus, you know, the games they dropped versus PS5 and the games they dropped. PS5 got PS4 beat, so hey, you can't really argue with that one. Um, that's all I got for right now. Uh, I could elaborate on a little bit more stuff. The Grand Theft Auto, oof. I'm hype about it. Because those graphics do look good. They do look good. But I would, I would have to play it first. I, I can't. I have to play it first. But, like, damn, man. I want GTA 6. <laughs> Be sure to follow me everywhere. Mass 23 Man. TikTok. Twitter. IG. Uh, Mastermind RGTV on YouTube. Podcast. 
mastermind i mean uh real game room trying to hurry up because anchor is kicking me out the room over here a uh, real gamer on all platforms apple spotify and google all platforms everywhere real gamer and um we'll be back for more man y'all now we rock off the top of the dome and uh throughout the week throughout the month of november i'll be giving y'all hot sauce of podcasts we got mm, anchor just cut me out but youtube y'all get some exclusives so, um, like I was saying before, YouTube, <laughs> I was talking, man, I'm going to cut the tape right here. But uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter, man. That's where I mostly be at. Uh, retweeting a lot of stuff on Twitter. Um, Master 23Mind. Uh, a lot of gaming stuff that I don't really come in here sometimes and speak about on the podcast. Um, and IG, Master 23Mind. And TikTok. I don't really be on there too much, but uh, we we there. We everywhere. And we're even in the metal universe. Master 23Mind, follow me there, too. So, uh, yeah, we want some Grand Theft Auto 6, man. We, we don't want no more remakes, remasters, and all that. A good question is, are they going to... The question is, is, I said, are they? Will they keep the music, the original music from GTA 3 San, and San Andreas and Vice City? That That's a question. Will they keep the original music? Hmm. That's all I got for y'all today, folks. Good question. And, um, hey, man, y'all want to come here and talk about some gaming, man? Y'all, uh, my door is open. Holler at me. DM me. Send me a DM, Twitter, on IG, whatever. I check it, man. I be so busy, but I do check. Uh, let's talk gaming, man. Any any type of passion or any type of love that you got for gaming you want to discuss? Back for Blood? Hey, I, I, want, I want to get some people here talking about Back for Blood. I haven't had a chance to play it yet. Uh, I know one of the homies, they actually got the game and had a good, great time playing it. So I want to get your thoughts on Back for Blood. And I'll be back in here uh, through the month of November talking all things gaming. And uh, I'm going to do a dedicated episode talking about uh, cryptocurrency, Metal Universe, and um, Metal Universe gaming, basically. Yeah. So we out. And thanks for all the love at YouTube and, and subs. Hit that subs like button, like button right at the bottom. I think it should pop up right here at the bottom. But yeah, hit that like button and hit that sub so we can grow and make this thing even better. Uh, peace, love, y'all stay blessed. We out.